Is this year a small Mercedes EQS or a budget EQS? This year is the all new Smart 3, a compact or small electric vehicle. Everything about here with Thomas Nautikfühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go with the front that looks Mercedes alike. And why is that? Yes, there are Mercedes folks working on that vehicle. Smart is now shared by Mercedes and Geely, and that's why. You have that Mercedes part, this Mercedes influence, but at the same time the Geely influence where you have the siblings of the Volvo EX30 or the Zeker X. And there has been the Smart 1 that is a little bit shorter and this one here now, the Smart 3, the longer and also this coupe shape version. We have it here in the Brabus trim, that's the all-wheel drive trim and it's already sporty. Look at that here in the lower part where the red shines through the black foreground. It's pretty cool actually. The light strip goes all the way through. LED from start and matrix LED then as an option. The length at 4 meters 40, that's 13 centimeters longer than the Smart 1. By the way, this hashtag thing, yes, they really call their cars hashtag 1 and hashtag 3. I usually make it a little bit simpler and just call them 3 and 1 because you know you also told me that you know when you have this hashtag thing and then the number usually you say like smart number three or smart number one yeah i mean this hashtag thing is their marketing thing but i just keep it with smart three that's more simple right the side profile is indeed eqs alike so definitely here the mercedes design and lengthwise if you think about the mercedes models this would be more or less equal to a mercedes eqa the mercedes eqb would be a little bit longer here the wheels are either 19 inch or with the Brabus version 20 inch. That looks definitely cooler. We'll also see later on about the ride. And once again, the Brabus version has accentuations and more Brabus badges. The Smart 3 is 8 centimeters or 3.5 inches lower than the Smart 1. You especially see it here in the rear where it's more in this condensed coupe style. Then the light strip again goes all the way through. Brabus version has the red accentuations and even more Brabus badges at the rear. Talking about the acceleration figure, Brabus is always all-way drive, that means one electric motor in the rear, plus one at the front. 3.7 seconds in the acceleration figure, so more or less a hot electric hatch actually. And if you go for a rear drive version, that's 5.8 seconds in the acceleration. There will later on also be an all-way drive version, which is not the Brabus one, to fill that gap in between. Turning in indicators here in the front, actually pretty cool, replacing the daytime running light. Turning indicators in the rear, integrated right here, so actually also visible and pretty cool, isn't it? Better fitting to my auto today is here this white vehicle. I wanted to show you that as a contrast. If you do not go for the Brabus version, this one here looks a little bit less sporty. These 19 inch wheels are in that styling also a little bit, let's say, matter of preference. <laughs> what do you think? Here, once again, the shape is of course the same. Our main vehicle was black with a red contrast. Here, other way around, red with a black contrast. As for the battery sizes, net figures, 47 kilowatt hours net for the small version, the Pro. All other versions, Pro Plus, the Pulse, the Premium, and here the Brabus get the 62 kilowatt hours net battery. Not too big, however, they focus on being like the city SUV, maybe secondary vehicle, or if you take it as a primary vehicle for the longer trips, you maybe get something else, I don't know. We'll later talk about the real-world range when we do the concise driving efficiency test. As for recharging, it's actually quite decent. The small battery, 7.4 kilowatt AC and 130 kilowatt DC. However, here the bigger battery, which we also have in the Brabus, that is at 22 kilowatt AC, that's decent, and 150 DC peak. However, in both cases, fast charging in optimum conditions is less than 30 minutes, 10 to 80% state of charge. Does it trunk or not? Yes, it does. It's a small one. Oh, ain't that cute? Here, for example, just with a tire fit kit, it would house a small cable, maybe. It's interesting here. They have a round key fob and it feels actually quite cool. So unusual, but why not? And then when you open here like this, there's also this real three-dimensional indentation on there. And you see completely flush then when you close the vehicle. What do you think? And they also give you this feedback here. Then we have frameless doors right here and door closing sound. 
It's actually quite cool. So that's rare for frameless doors that the door closing sound is good. Then interior here, the red wrap tight, red contrast, nice structure on the inside, galvanized window levers. And this really looks pretty much like Mercedes, doesn't it? Here in the lower part, however, all hard pack. And also here on the inside is hard pack. So when you have like a, a case or a key in here, it's sliding all over the place. So that's why you would actually use felt on the inside. Steering wheel here in the Bravo styling. Then we have microfiber all around. That's pretty cool. Red contour stitches on the inside. Real buttons at the steering wheel. And the quality here also is actually pretty nice. Driving selection is here, P and put in like this for a drive. I think it's an easy selection. Digital instruments, quite easy and nice to read. However, here with the driving modes that I think, yeah, you have to like that. So this is when you switch the driving modes like Eco, Comfort, Sport and Bravos. Yeah, pretty loud sound and this visualization for me a little bit too much. Or do you like that? And the higher trims also include a head-up display. Panoramic roof, super wide, a fixed one, however, no shade. There, for example, the Smart One does have a shade you can apply. Hmm. Then about the seats in the Pro Plus version, get leather red seats, the Premium and the Pulse always have an animal share. Brabus here comes with a microfiber on the inside and also interesting details here, these knobs or how we can call them i don't know so it looks kind of cool but you sometimes feel them when sitting on it and you could also maybe look at it hey is there a fly on my seat or something so i'm not sure yet what do you think so on the one hand i found them cool on the other hand irritating i have to make up my mind about that here the smart 3 by the way gets also in this bravos version here the integrated head restraints that's pretty nice then here with the stitching on the head restraint and also if we look at the floor mats they pay attention to details look at that this high floor on this one and you have these you know the structure on the inside headroom yeah plenty of headroom left look at that here with 189 or 602, no problem at all. It's also interesting here, this matte middle console. So what they did here is they used a spray that contains metal that was coated here on this foil. So that gives this special metal-alike effect. And also here the quality when we open these ones, for example, here, listen to that. This is really Mercedes-like, if not better actually so good build quality here's inductive charging pad two usb-c chargers and overall this look here with the three turbine vents anyone mercedes amg gt in the previous generation yeah there you can see that the mercedes interior designer could play a little bit then we have this opening right here for the cup holders these are also adaptive and then there's this armrest. You can, you know, it's also a soft touch on the top part, well attached. And underneath, there's even a cooling function. There's a nice ambient lighting integration, by the way, here, then also inside the air vents, and also here. And you can also individualize the colors. So I said they pay attention to details. And also here, maybe even more than Mercedes, look at that the seat belt holder, fabric covering here on the one side even on the other side that it doesn't scratch along here that it's soft and doesn't make any noise and so on well done however what could be improved here this lower middle console storage this is hard pack and you can see here prone to scratches this would need a felt covering that also things don't fly around while driving interesting also this knee pad here so here at the inside part it's soft the top part then is a little bit harder and that actually works then when you put your knee right here then it hits the soft part so here in the smart 3 because of the seating position that is lower and a little bit more stretched it works with the knee for 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 for, 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 for tall adults <laughs> and with the smart one actually because you sit a little bit higher it's a little more condensed there my knee would be like here when i'm driving and then i'm kind of above the knee pad so but here in the smart 3 it works and now leah is showing us the features there in the top so first of all the lights they work with touch like this it's also more from the beat sound system and then you have for sunglasses the storage on top also with a nice clicking sound click 
and then we have the ooh, that's cool, <laughs> and the sun visors are also with illumination. There we go. Interior cockpit overview. I feel it looks like a Mercedes sports car, doesn't it? What do you think? Tell me in the comments. Here with the central form right there, then the turbine air vents, AMG GT style, soft touch here, leather red on the top part, and 12.8 inch the screen. Lower part are some hashtag capacitive BS hotkey buttons, but at least you have them. Here, for example, that's the one where I switch through the driving modes, and this one next to it is where you can, for example, activate the rocket launch, that's the launch control and also change the recuperation level. And you have a good overview here from this infotainment system. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay is available now. Also wireless, it will be rolled out to all customers that already have the vehicles very soon. And you can see this integration really wide using all the screen. That's actually pretty cool. The mirrors are being adjusted Tesla alike than here at the steering wheel. And the climate unit you see in the lower part, it always stays at that position at least and the vent strength is adjusted here. This leopard is this uh, avatar that is following you all the way in the screen. And here you can activate the heated steering wheel. And here these micro rubber seats are also available with seat cooling. So while I appreciate that they have simple trim levels and not many options, there's one flaw to it. Because when you, for example, say, hey, I want the Pro Plus trim with a high grade leather red, then you cannot get the heat pump. Hmm. Heat pump only for the premium, Brabus and the Pulse. Rear seats, first of all, the doors here, also with a soft touch leather red in the top part, just hard pack in the lower part. Window in the rear goes down like this, by the way, always interesting to see. Then you have more legroom in the rear, even with tall adults. In the smart one, there's just tiny space left, but still works. This one here easily works with five tall adults, also here on the middle seat. Of course, the outer seats are more comfortable. Overall, I found the seating comfort. The seats are kind of sporty and stiff, but overall still very good in the comfort, both front and in the rear, and headroom in the rear is also no problem at all. Interesting detail, by the way, here, these lights, these ones you can really physically press in and uh, to, you know, activate or deactivate them. It's, it's a very cool solution and also a good premium quality, I feel. As for the trunk or for the boot, here comes our most successful real or short content. I hope you already tuned into our YouTube Shorts channel, Thomas Let's Go. I link it in the video description and the pinned comments. See you also there. But now to the content here, because the trunk or boot opening is here hidden inside the A of the smart logo. There we go, when I press it, then it opens, pretty cool. 370 liters, these are, you can see it fits with a decent luggage size. Just here, this cover, I mean, that's the way it is closed, but when you have it opened like this, this part is super long, so you cannot push it down yet. Just push it up and then I get it out. It's a meter of 40 inches in width, approximately, and the length here is about 83 centimeters or 33 inches. And when you have put everything out, then actually, you can use this cover, look at that here at the sides. You can fold down like this, um, but then again, you're missing length here, so not ideal. Underneath, there is space for a charging cable, for example. Here also in the smart styling, and you can also fold the seats. You could also do it from here, fold these ones up, push it through like this and that. There we go. Complete length around 160 meters or 62 inches to the front seats. And here we can also very well see how the Smart 3 trunk still has some more space left in front of the suitcase. Whereas in the Smart 1, there's just a little space left in front of that suitcase. All right, Brabus mode and rocket launch activation. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> That was already 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. <laughs> oh <no. laughs> Just two days ago, we were riding a roller coaster together, one of the fastest ones in Europe. And I can tell you, this was a similar reaction on the roller coaster. <laughs> there was also with that race strat with a 3 1 2 go. That was really interesting. Right? Because, first of all, I thought like, Wait a minute, I activate the race start, is nothing happening because sometimes you have this build up from like an artificial sound and so on. But here it was this now, um, yeah, why not? Definitely super quick. So, you know, you always have rear wheel drive when you have a rear wheel drive version, all wheel drive, 
the front electric motor is usually in normal modes on demand, but when you're in a sporty or in the Brabus mode, then it's already engaged, then you can get the best acceleration out of that vehicle. Otherwise, it takes a second. For example, when I'm here in the um, like comfort or in the eco mode, and when I would then hit the throttle quickly, then it takes just a split of a second that the front electric motor is also being activated. So, yeah, you have to decide then if it's more this eco approach you're driving or if it's the sporty approach you want, but that works very well. 20 inch wheels, at the moment the road is pretty even, that means we also have good comfort. Pretty tight in the seats, but it's actually also good comfort, so I feel they serve sporty and comfortable purposes. Steering wheel has a good feeling, or the steering itself, fine adjustment. It also changes according to the mode, for example in the Brabus mode it gets then stiffer, when you have it on that auto setting. However, you can also adjust it in the menu that you, for example, always want a light steering or a medium or a heavy steering. So that's good that you can actually choose that. Choosing it while driving is maybe not the most clever idea because it is somewhat distracting, but you can set it once and then it's actually fine. Or here, when you leave it on auto, then again, it switches according to the driving mode. Suspension does not change, it's not an adaptive suspension, so it does not get stiffer or softer depending on the driving mode. But overall, I think they found a good good um, setup here. In the Brabus, of course, it's everything is tuned to, um, you know, to this sportier approach. You know, the Brabus used to be, like, well, started as this only tuning company for Mercedes, then evolved, evolved, evolved. Then Brabus had this cooperation with Smart already pretty early. It was already for the for two versions, for example. And now they're working together even closer than especially like with this branding all over the place and so on. Here, 120 kilometers an hour, like 70 miles an hour. It's actually good as for the wind noise and so on. So it's decently silent. It feels like a premium ride indeed. Here I feel a little bit longer wheelbase than the Smart One also helps to make it a little bit more settled on the road. And the Smart One has a little bit more movement, which is a little bit too hectic, I feel. So the Smart Three definitely here with a tuned setup. I also talked to the CEOs of Europe and Germany from Smart, and they said here with the Three, they tuned it even more to be more likable as for the whole suspension setup. And I also have to applaud them for then for that, that they really take customer feedback and also feedback from the journalist and they really listen and then act accordingly. It was a, it's a funny story, by the way, that one of the first smart customers here from the new smart generations is Dieter Zetscher, the former CEO of Daimler or Mercedes. And he actually said, for example, hey, like the attention assist is too loud and it's reacting too early and so on. Uh, and then they changed it accordingly, taking his customer feedback. It's also a, a quite funny story, isn't it? So here on the motorway, it's really behaving very well. It feels kind of engaging at the same time, good comfort. And indeed, I've just been driving the Smart 1 and then switched to the Smart 3. And everything from the assistance systems and the beeping sounds and so on, it was really annoying in the Smart 1. They fixed that now in the Smart 3. So here, way calmer experience. Here also the assistance systems. At the moment, active cruise control or the active lane keeping assist is activated. So you can see here, it's keeping the car in the lane in a quite smooth way. So on the motorway, I think it was a little bit too loud when we are above 80 kilometers an hour or like above 50 miles an hour or something like that. And I feel the wind noises are really picking up. In the Zeker X and the Volvo EX30, it was the same, but there, especially from the side mirror, here I think it's a little bit better as for the side mirror, but it's not the not the calmest car at high speeds. At low speeds, it's actually absolutely fine. And now we're going for some windy corners, have some more fun uh, driving modes. Go once again to the Brabus mode, that we have good acceleration and so on. And the steering feel once again is pretty cool, really precise and direct. The suspension together with the 20 inch wheels is somewhat stiff, so it means for sporty driving, it's pretty cool. So just when it gets bumpy, you feel it's rough and you feel a lot of movement. So it's not the best on the passenger, I would say, but it's actually a really lot of fun here. Wow. So the car is doing that very well. Of course, I always have a rear wheel bias, even if I have an all-wheel drive model here. 
and it's accelerating out very well. As for recuperation, different modes are available. So here you start in standard. This is already quite strong. So even the standard mode is not at all about rolling. There is a notable recuperation. And here on strong, it's even stronger when I lift my foot off the throttle. And then you can even go to e-pedal. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and now I can confirm, really? Why? Um, so when I then lift my foot off the throttle, it's defo one pedal driving. So here then, no brake pedal at all needed, just in emergency situations. I always feel that some rolling effect is better on the passenger, especially unless you're really tuning it very finely with the throttle. But even if I really just slightly lift the throttle, there is really strong braking already from the regenerative braking. So since the standard mode is already quite strong in the recuperation, I would rather recommend to go with the standard, but yeah, you can tune that to your liking. Yeah, really, really tight corners, but it's also not a long vehicle and smooth and seamless acceleration out then here. Wow, that's pretty cool. So I like the overall setup. The Volvo being a little bit smaller, felt more hot hatch alike. So I wouldn't exactly say that I have the purest hot hatch feeling there. I had it in the Volvo EX30. Here it's a little bit more balanced. You feel more like in a more grown up vehicle if you compare it to the Volvo. So I feel if you could compare now Volvo EX30, Zeker X and the Smart 1 and Smart 3 in driving, the EX30 feels best in the sporty driving as for suspension setup. Smart one more similar to that because it's shorter. Smart three feels more most elaborate in the driving because here also in comparison to the Zeker X, here the assistance system and so on, they have done, done a better job there. It's working, you know, it's just working everything, you know, the Zeker X, they need to tweak the software things a little bit more. So yeah, that's what I would take from driving all of these siblings that the Smart 3 feels most elaborated from the whole thing and also user interface. That's the worst in the Volvo, by the way, user interface. Here I have head-up display, I have instruments, I can pick which one I want to look at. That's actually fine. I don't have any of that in the Volvo. However, I have that one in the Zeker again. Then the Zeker X is the best in the interior quality. It looks like a luxury vehicle from the interior and also all animal free the Volvo at least all, all leather free. Here in the Smart they need to upgrade that because they still have, have a lot of animal skin choices or parts in the vehicle. Need that. But driving wise does it very well. So here also when the roads are very even, 20 inch wheels and the stiff suspension, they do help. Beautiful roads here on Majorca. I love that island. They have so many beautiful spots especially in the northern part of the island. So it's not only, you know, like this uh, party, the Germans say the Ballermann, uh, where they have um, yeah, a lot of party and beer and everything. You, you get the picture. <laughs> but it's also beautiful landscape spots here, especially in the northern area and great also for car driving or for, uh, for cycling, actually. Yeah, so really liked it from the sporty aspect. But the question is, when we drove everything, motorway 120 130 kilometers an hour 70 80 miles an hour and also here winding corners uphill then we go downhill again also some city driving everything together what about the fuel economy and the real world range fuel economy energy economy oh cheap and our final consumption test. So note that on the motorway, the around 120 kilometers an hour, 70 miles an hour, consumption went up to about 23 kilowatt hours on one kilometer. So that's less than three miles per kilowatt hour. However, the overall with everything, city, mountain up, mountain down, we also had some nice uh, recuperation here. So eight kilowatt hours recuperation, 31 kilowatt hours total consumption, so you can deduct that from that, it's actually pretty decent. And everything together, around 20 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers, that's a little bit over three miles per kilowatt hour, means for this, the bigger battery here in the Brabus version, or in the other versions, 
except the very small one here around 320 kilometers of real world range that's around 200 miles as i said it's not meant for long distance journeys more for city mid distance and so on then again you don't need so much raw materials yeah. so it always depends on the use case of course which one do you find best of all these siblings smart 3 or smart 1 or the volvo ex30 or the Zeker X.